Hello and welcome to a new video about alternating current. Well, today we're not really talking about alternating current. Yeah? Today we're talking about mathematics. Because we need quite some mathematics that we can calculate, that we can do our calculations for alternating current. And what we need is called complex numbers. Okay? Should have heard this in mathematics, but uh, I will repeat it. Um, just to make a full picture. So, complex numbers is our topic today. So, today we are in a math lesson. So, what are complex numbers? Yeah. Well, I think everybody of you, you knows uh, real numbers. Yeah. Real numbers, we call them real numbers. Uh, if you don't know what real numbers are, then this video is probably not suitable for you. <laughs> no. uh, real numbers, real numbers are all numbers we know. That was easy, right? So all numbers we know. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3 natural numbers. Then we have the numbers which we can set as fraction. Yeah. Uh, and then we have numbers which cannot be even which cannot even be represented by a fraction, like pi. Yeah? But all these numbers combined, yeah? these are real numbers. So usually in mathematics we draw a line. Here's the line, not further. <laughs> this is the real, and we're drawing all numbers. Yeah, we have one, so we have zero, we have one, we have two, we have minus one, we have minus two. Yeah. This is representing our real numbers. Yeah. Every number we know, for every number we know, there is a point, and if it's zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, it's always, everything is covered. Because real numbers are containing all numbers we know. We can imagine. Huh? And isn't that enough? <laughs> no. Huh? Because some things cannot be calculated with real numbers. What can be calculated? One example. Uh, the square root of a negative number. We heard in mathematics, that's not possible, pack. Finito. Huh? Yeah, but, you know, mathematicians. Mathematics is the only science which is completely alone. Huh? So mathematicians define things and, and uh, make assumptions and then they, this leads to some conclusions. Yeah? But those things they can, they are defining, they are free. Yeah? You can think of any definition you want, yeah? as long as it does not violate previous, more important definitions, you can do that. Yeah? And then you can build your house of cards, yeah? and where everything is in order. Yeah? That is what math mathematics makes quite beautiful because they don't need anything else around. They, they, all they need is their definitions and then the conclusions out of the definitions. And so they thought it must be there must be it must be possible to find a definition that we can do a square root of a negative number. And therefore they said okay. I am inventing now, I am defining a so-called imaginary unit. Huh? So I'm defining an imaginary unit. And this imaginary unit, I call it I, huh? because it's imaginary unit, and it's defined as the square root of minus one. It's just by definition. So this means my i squared equals 1. Minus 1, of course. Huh? i squared defin uh, definition is minus 1. And now suddenly it's possible that I can do a, a, a square root because I simply have this negative number I get away by getting out the imaginary unit, and then inside the, the square root, there is only a positive number left, and that's it. Huh? 
So actually I can do now square root of negative numbers. With this definition it does not violate anything because okay, that's, that's how it is defined. Now we have numbers which can consist of real numbers and imaginary numbers because these are imaginary numbers. Yeah? And so they thought how to display this and if we have two components of something which can have everything we understand then we have a second axis simply. Yeah? So there is a second axis here. The so-called imaginary axis. Yeah? And this is also 1 and 2 and minus 1 and minus 2. So there's now there's the same. Yeah? But this time it's not just one, it's one i, it's two i, it's minus one i, it's minus two i. So here the, are the imaginary numbers, here are the real numbers. And what are now, now before, before I write this, I have to, this is what we learn in mathematics. Huh? In electrotechnic, we do it a little bit different. Huh? We have a little extension. To this, huh? why? Why must it be? Yeah. Now in mathematics we do it that way, and now we do electrotechnic, and we do it suddenly another way. I show you our extension, yeah, and then you decide how severe this is. This is the imaginary unit in mathematics. This is the imaginary unit in electrotechnics. We don't write an I. We write a J. That's the change. Yeah. I think it's bearable. And the mathematicians among us, it's an imaginary unit that has a perfectly signed I, imaginary. What's J? J, J imaginary, it cannot even tell it, yeah? cannot even speak it out. Well, the reason, uh, of course, it's, there is another reason than just to be different. Yeah? The reason is that the symbol for a current is i. Yeah? And a small i is symbolizing the actual value right now of the current yeah? is a small i. And that it cannot lead to confusion with our imaginary unit. i is the sign for current, j is the sign for your imaginary unit. So there is a reason behind, not just to be different. Yeah? Now, what is now a complex number? A complex number is a combination between... This is a complex number. Actually, these are uh, infinite numbers, complex numbers. Yeah? Because the, uh, this has uh, an area. Let's think about the complex numbers, which is at the imaginary middle point of my dot here. Okay? This little dot is representing an imaginary number. An imaginary number consists of a real part, A, and an, an imaginary part, so this is, a, this is a complex number even, yeah? this is B. Yeah? And this here is my complex number set. Yeah? To indicate that it's a complex number, I make this little under dash here. Yeah? And this consists of a real part, A, plus J, the imaginary unit, B. Yeah. This here is the real part. And this here is the imaginary part. And together they are a complex number. Uh -huh. That's it. That's a complex number. Yeah. Real part, imaginary part, this is called component representation yeah, because it consists of the components, real part and imaginary part. Yeah. Component representation of our, of our complex, complex number. Imaginary numbers are just here, real numbers are just here and complex numbers are somewhere, yeah, somewhere else. <laughs> uh, well, there was also here, if we would have, for instance, here minus b, yeah, I just show this because it is important sometimes. Then here we have the so-called conjugate complex. Yeah? 
C star. That's A minus JB. We have the same real bar, but the negative, the negative uh, imaginary bar. Yeah? Conjugate complex, this is called. Conjugate complex. This is sometimes important. This is why I mention it. Yeah? Because, you know, if you do a square root of a number, you usually have plus minus. And this is not different in, in, in with imaginary numbers. Yeah? So if you have a square root of a negative number, you get out the imaginary part. So it's i square root of some number yeah? plus minus i square root. So we have the solution of a of a negative square root is always a com conjugate complex pair of numbers. Clear, right? <laughs> Doesn't really matter. We don't need this. Just to mention conjugate complex, that's it. Yes? That's what the term is for. Right? But we can think about uh, complex numbers also in a different way. Yeah? So we have this component representation and then we could say okay I have here something like a vector uh, with a certain length and the certain length is the so-called absolute value of my complex number the absolute value and this absolute value has a certain angle mathematically positive starting here uh. so we have also a uh, absolute value and the argument it's called and the absolute value how can we calculate the absolute value look at that we do have here here we have a here we have b yeah we do have here a rectangular triangle rectangular triangle Pythagoras yes so we have here a squared plus b squared a squared plus b squared is actually z squared, yeah, and so we make the square root out of this, and that is our absolute value of our complex numbers. And this is a little bit too much, too much lines everywhere, so we just write z. Addition z z without under dash, it's the it's the absolute value. Yeah? And how to calculate phi? Yeah? See here, hello, rectangular triangle. Yeah. We do have the sides, we do have trigonometry. Yeah. So here, this is the opposite. Here, this is the adjacent. Yeah. Opposite, adjacent, those two things are no. This is the tangents. Yeah. The tangents is adjacent, uh, opposite, B, divided by adjacent, A. Yeah. And then I use the arc tank, arcus tangents, and that's it. This is how to get from component to to length and and angle, okay? And how to get from length and angle? If we want to get back to component, a is actually the length here. This is set multiplied, and now it's the adjacent. Yeah, so we need to have the cosinus, cosinus of phi, yeah, and b equals z multiplied by sine of phi. Trigonometry. So actually, if we have our z, and this equals a plus jb, yeah, we have here that z cosinus from phi plus j z sign from phi and then now I show you something else I show you Euler's formula Euler's formula what is this a the Euler's number j phi equals cosinus phi plus j sine phi. That's Euler's formula for complex numbers. Huh? That's, that's, that's simply how it is. 
Ja, that was all I found out. Ja. So, if we have some z, e hoch j phi, we have z cosinus phi plus j z sine phi. Look at it, 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 look at it. It's the same, it's the same. So, this is also a representation of a complex number, if you see somewhere a number a raised by the power of j and some other number, then it's a complex number with absolute value and argument and, and, and angle. Okay? Polar coordinates is called. This is a components. Yeah? This is a polar representation. Component representation, polar representation. And this is how you can change that. Sometimes it's also written as z. And then there is a little angle symbol, phi. Yeah, sometimes it's done like this. This is an alternative, alternative representation. I'll write it like that, or sometimes short like that. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier to calculate things with, with uh, polar representation. Calculate things. Uh, now we know what complex numbers are. Now we need to define how to calculate with them. Yeah? How to add to, how to subtract to, how to multiply and stuff. Yeah? This will be in the next video. Yeah? Next video, calculation with complex numbers. Again, mathematics. But this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.